everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm going to show you uh, these new stamp sets from Concord and Knight. These are the Faith and Love stamps and the Lily stamp set. And I'm working in Luke 1227, which says, Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. So I thought this would be a great verse to use that Lily stamp set. So since that stamp is pretty big, I'm going to be using this Stamp Perfect positioning tool from Hampton Arts. And I'm going to show you how you can use this in your Bible. Now I'm waiting to get my hands on the new Tim Holtz one because it does have the open edge, um, which I think will make it a lot easier to use in my Bible. But until then, I'm making do with this and I tend to use this um, mostly when I'm stamping really large stamps or if I'm going to be stamping something I know I may need to stamp multiple times like if I'm using distress inks or something like that I'll pull out this tool and it works great for the margins of your Bible so don't be afraid to use some of those tools um, in your Bible that weren't you know things that you thought that you could use so I'm just gonna lay this stamp down um, and position it where I like it on the page and then you just swing this door over and pick up the stamp now the stamp is pretty new so it pulled the page up a little bit but that's okay I just stick everything back down and I'm going to be using Versafine um, black ink today and that just gives me a really crisp image it does seem to bleed through I think it bleeds a little bit less than stays on ink um, but it is permanent once it's dry, so then I can do some watercoloring and things like that. So then you're just going to flip that over and stamp it down onto the page. And there you go. There's a perfect impression of the stamp on the page. Now, if it hadn't been perfect, I could come back in with that uh, door, swing it over, ink it up, swing it over, and get it right in the exact same spot again. I'm just going to heat set this ink. Since it is a pigment ink, um, I don't want to smear it. <laughs> and so I'm going to heat set it, make sure it's dry before I start the next step. And I'm just showing you here, it does heavily shadow and slightly bleed through, but stays on does too. So I'm going to be using this Molotow masking pen today. I'm going to be doing some watercoloring for the background, but I don't want to accidentally get any of the color within this flower because I'm going to maintain kind of the whiteness of this flower. So this is a masking fluid that I am just filling in the flower. Now, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Make sure that you don't go over the same spot several times. Um, it does start to get kind of chunky and weird if you do that. So you want to try to cover it in one pass. And this pen is actually kind of pricey, but I did find mine in the discount section of Hobby Lobby. It looked like it was maybe uh, the product inside was separating, but once I shook it up, it was fine. So I haven't had any problems. So I've gone ahead and covered that entire flower. And then now I'm pulling out my favorite watercolors. These are the Gonsai Tombi watercolors. And I'm just gonna create kind of a loose background behind this flower. And I think I'm gonna need to find the individual pans of this mint green color because I use it on almost every single entry. It is my favorite color. And I'm also gonna be using this kind of teal blue color. And so, um, you're going to see a technique that I do pretty often um, for my backgrounds. It's a little scary at first. I am going to soak this page with a spray bottle and then I'll go in and drop in the watercolors. It is fine. The Bible survives all that water. I make sure everything is 100% dry before I shut my Bible so I don't have to worry about any kind of mildew or anything like that. Um, the page does crinkle, but once it's been closed for a little while, that pretty much like 90, 95% of that gets straightened out. So it doesn't seem to bother me. And so now I'm just dropping those different colors in. Not, I'm not wanting a perfect wash in the back. So it's okay if it's kind of splotchy. That's what I'm going for. And because I have that masking fluid down on the stamping, that is resisting the watercolor. Okay, so I've gone ahead and dried that layer that first layer and then I'm going to re-wet it again and then I'm going to add a second layer. I know that seems kind of silly to dry it and then wet it again but this allows me to layer the watercolors on top of themselves and get some dimension in the color that I have in the background. So I'm using those same two colors and then just randomly dropping the color kind of keeping it in that bottom left hand corner and then I'm just kind of tapping my brush to kind of spray a little bit of the color up towards the rest of the page. 
And so now we can start removing the masking fluid. So you're just gonna gently rub this with your finger. It doesn't ruin your page. You do wanna be careful that you don't press too hard because you may accidentally start to rub the text off of your Bible page, but as long as you're pretty careful, it's it's fine. They do sell a like an adhesive eraser. I'll link it down below. Um, I need to pick one up because then that makes the step a whole lot easier. So it does take a couple minutes to rub all this off just because I wanna be careful that I'm not rubbing any of the lettering or the stamped image off my page. So now you can see I've gone ahead and removed all of that and you've got that clean image. Now I'm taking this piece that comes in the Lily stamp set and it's this shading piece that goes in the middle of this flower. The great thing about the stamp set is it comes with this piece but it doesn't need to be perfectly stamped within the um, flower image. So I, I like that. And I'm just using one of my um, Faber-Castell big brush markers to ink this up. And this is the Dark Naples Ochre number 184. It's just a really pretty kind of mustard yellow color. And I'm going to stamp that down. Now this stamp set I'm showing you right there does come with these little dot details that you can then stamp in. But I'm going to go ahead and just use my big brush marker to dot that in. Uh, just because I think it'd be quicker than me trying to ink it up with that marker. If I was using like a stamp pad, then it would be, you know, pretty quick to use. So I'm just adding some dotted details. And then I'm going to use some other colors from my brush markers here. This is May Green, number 170. And I will have these listed and linked down below in the description bar. So be sure to check that out. And I'm just adding a little bit of green to the center. I looked up some pictures of lilies online and they have a little bit of a green tint, tint to the center of these flowers. Um, that color there was leaf green number 112. Just to add some shading to the stem. And now I'm probably gonna do a big coloring no-no, so be prepared. <laughs> I'm first laying down some cold gray number one and that's number 230 in these Faber-Castell markers. And I'm just adding some gray shading to the flower just to give it some dimension. Nothing fancy, I am not an expert at coloring. I'm just adding some color so that this image doesn't look so flat against the page. So just kind of on the undersides of the flowers, the edges, and the center of the flower. Now here's the no-no. I'm gonna take a warm gray, number one, and that's number 270 in those markers, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of this. I know you probably should stick with either cold grays or warm grays, but I didn't really want it to be much darker, so I didn't wanna to go to the cold gray number two, um, but this just kinda of added a little bit more dimension and kind of an earthy tone, and I was okay with that. It doesn't, I don't think it turned out that bad, mixing the cold and the warm. Here I'm taking my Univall Signo White Gel Pen and just adding some highlights and some texture to the high points of the flower and a little bit to the stamen there in the center and a little bit to the stem. Really simple coloring. So here is this awesome set. This is the Faith and Love stamp set. This stamp set is huge. So this is a six by eight stamp set. So for all you Bible journalers, this is going to be a must-have. And I'm not just saying that because they sent this to me. I genuinely, if I would have ordered the stamp set, it is amazing. It has some great words and um, pieces for your Bible journaling. So I've gone ahead and pulled out uh, the words trust in him. And I thought about putting the always, but it wasn't going to quite fit. Um, this passage in Luke is talking about not being anxious and so that's why I chose to use this trust in him. There's another boo-boo. I let my magnets snap together. Um, you need to keep those separate and don't let them touch because they can uh, shatter, but it's, it happens. So I pulled out this stamp positioner again. And because I'm stamping, stamping the lettering and I want to kind of stamp it all at the same time, and make sure it's straight, I'm gonna use this positioner. And these stamps are great quality. I didn't have to stamp multiple times to get a good impression. They just had a really good, clean impression first time stamping, which is great, I appreciate that. And again, I'm gonna use the Versifying Black Ink. With your Bible page, if you mess up, you can't just throw it away and start a new page like you can with a card. So you want good quality stamps that are gonna stamp well the first time that you use them um, and not be an issue and be a hassle to use. So I appreciate that these are pretty good quality. 
can see I'm just doing the same thing, inking it up, moving that door over, and you've got this great impression. So I've pulled out these pieces from that stamp set, and um, they create kind of a speech bubble, but it's open, so you can do it as big or as small as you need to contain whatever um, wording you're putting on your page. So again, I'm using the Dark Naples Ochre uh, Big Brush Marker to ink this stamp up. So I wanted the speech bubble to be seen, but I wanted it um, kind of knocked back into the background rather than using the black. I felt like that would just be too strong for the layout that I had here. So here's the bottom. And this actually lined up perfect to where the bottom of the speech bubble kind of pointed to the whole entire um, section versus 22 through 34, where it's talking about do not be anxious. So that was kind of a happy <laughs> coincidence, but it worked out. Again, just inking that up and then stamping it down. These markers don't bleed through the page, so they're great. These big brush ones are great to use for stamping. So now I'm gonna pull out my watercolors again, and I'm gonna pull this really pretty kind of mustard yellow color, and I'm just gonna add some um, more splashes of color to the background just to kind of tie in more of that yellow on this page. And I'm also gonna take a little bit of black and splatter just a little bit. I'm using a smaller brush for that. And I'm gonna just do that a little bit on the background just to add some more texture. I'm gonna dry all of that really, really well. And then now I'm gonna take these tabs. I don't remember where I got this sticker sheet, but I had this really cute kind of yellow striped tab on it. And I'm taking some of the, uh, I think these are the Chit Chat stickers. I'll link them down below from Tim Holtz and the word trust. And these tabs weren't scored, so I'm gonna use my scoreboard just to create kind of a score line, so that way I can fold it over on the page easier. And that's pretty much it. I'll go ahead and probably date stamp this, and that's it, the page is done. So if you have any questions about the products that I use, be sure to leave those in the comments down below. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. I try to post three times a week um, with various uh, tutorials and product reviews and things like that. And until next time, thank you so much, bye-bye.